Okay, now we're talking about bait and lure too much at a set. If you're going to have, if you're worried about pulling a fisher in from any distance or any other predator for that matter, I use a lot of call stations near my set. And a call station can be anything, can be a, a carcass thrown up in a tree nearby, anything to get them in the vicinity if you can't pick location. Uh, personally, and uh, when I start trapping, if I start trapping in the early fall, I don't have access to carcasses. I haven't caught anything yet, and this is pretty early this time of year. We don't have many carcasses to work with. So what I'll do ahead of season, I'll save these uh, soda cans, beer cans, whatever. Don't pull the pull tab on. You want that pull tab on there. Wash them out good. Go down to the store and buy you a bunch of smelt. Or get you a minnow trap and set it with some bread and get a bunch of... Uh, minnows and whatnot, small enough to fit down that hole of your can. Stick a half a dozen of those minnows in there. Now take them cans and freeze them back up. Put them in a bag and freeze them back up in the freezer. Don't pull them out till you get ready to bait, or bait your locations. Either set your traps, try to put them out just ahead, a few days ahead of when you set your traps, or the next trip over your line when you're checking your traps. Now that sun hits on that frozen fish. First of all, you got these cans of frozen fish. You're not getting any of this bad uh, juice all over you, like if you're lugging around a bunch of carcasses. And uh, it makes it a lot easier on the trunk of your wife's car. And uh, so these cans are all froze up, so there's no, they've got no odor to them. The fish are froze solid or still fresh there. Now once that you hang this can up, that sun hits on that aluminum can for about two days, you start getting a big stink. Those fish are pretty well froze out in the fall. And uh, within three or four days, you got a hell of a big stink here, and it's a great call station. Now, this is very, very important. Always try to pull a limb down if you possibly can. Try to pick a hardwood tree, a little maple or something, where you can pull that limb down and tie it off to the limb and let it spring back up. That way you won't have any problem with bear or coon. If you can't do it, I don't see where we can here, well, that's okay. Run a wire around it like this. Now, it's very, very important. Our spring hole is right here at this location. It's my cameraman showing you. Always, always put your call station out ahead of your bait hole or your spring hole or your lure stick. Never put it in back of him because a fox or a coon comes in that will really bother him. If I put it out that way, hang it up in the tree, you'll want to keep his eye on that call station that bothers him. But if you put it out that way, he'll work your set and you won't have to worry about him working it from the side or wanting to worry, not come all the way in there. This is all. Always a good way to mark your set, too. Now you see cans hanging all over the wood. That's it. That's your call station. Like I say, I hate to carry any more than I have to. I usually leave my traps right here hanging in the trees from year to year because I keep using these spring holes over and over and over. Spring holes are a fantastic fisher set. Old time fox set, and it's uh, been a badly neglected set over the years. Nobody makes them anymore, and that's the beauty of them. Probably about the deadliest fisher set there is. And uh, to really make this work, this is a, an old established spring that I've used for many, many years. You really don't want a big spring. When you find these springs, try to find them in the summer, the driest time of the summer. And if you find water in them in the middle of the summer, you know that they are true spring. And the uh, they're not going to go dry on you. I'm using a number two offset here, and uh, with about four foot chain on it and grapple. And I like a two because it's got that added jaw spread for a spring hole. Now, I like to adjust them so the pans sit up a little higher than the jaws. Uh, not not uh, like a, a dirt set where you want them set down low or even lower than the jaws or level than the jaws. I like to bend them up, bend them back. You can use a pair of pliers if I can, so the pan actually sticks up in the air a little bit. Keep that animal foot dry. Keep your moss dry. Bury your chain. Set your trap as tight as you can there without rocking. You don't really have to worry about a rocking in this kind of a set because the animal's stepping right dead on the pan. You haven't got to worry about him stepping on the, the side of the springs or anything and maybe throwing the trap like he's in a dirt set. You take these wet leaves and cover all that. Some guys will tell you, well, you don't have to cover them when they're under water. Well, I'm here to tell you I prefer to cover them. Maybe you don't have to, but I feel a lot better about it myself. I, I like kind of 
set the trap for the jaw just level with the surface, the pan slightly above it, and then sold it in with the leaves so you really give it a dry look. Set it as tight to your landing rock as you can get. I make my bait holders on a sumac. It's about an inch in diameter. I cut them in the summer, let them dry out. I take and drill down about well, roughly three quarters or an inch into the top of it, take that pith out. That's what I lure hold. Now, I, I like to drill, I like to have them at least this long. I used to use shorter ones, but I have problems once in a while coming back and finding the lure holder gone because if you don't push it all the way down in, a lot of times an old coon will reach over there and you'll pull it up. And once they get doing that, they'll do it to every spring hole you got. It doesn't happen very often, but it does happen. And if your lure stick is gone, it's usually a coon that got it. Now, this stick goes down in, so I cut mine a little bit longer where I can really push them down in. And a lot of these springs that we have here are very rocky. Sometimes you have to drive them down in with a hatchet. But this goes down in right on the outside edge of your, your jaws. No more than the spread of your hand from your landing spot. And make sure it's about roughly, well, no more than an inch and a half, or two inches out of the water. If you get it up here too high, a fox or a fisher or a coon can stand here and lay his nose over on the stick and you don't have to take that final step. I squeeze that down, kind of flatten it out, and drop it right on that pan cover. That's it. That's your set. Don't try to complicate it. Stand on your landing rock when you're doing it. Some of the old timers would advise you, well, you wait up the spring and you stand in the water you're making. I'd like to see you wait up the spring and stand in the water where you're making a set without making a, a bomb crater here. I mean, you would have the damnedest mess you've ever seen in your life. Put your landing stop, spot in when you're making the set. You stand on your landing spot. Don't be afraid to make it with your bare hands. A fox or a coyote is not afraid of anything you do around a spring hole as long as that traps in the water. You can set them barehanded all day long. It isn't like trapping dirt. Anymore, I set all these spring holes basically for fisher. That's why I use skunk essence. Now, if I was in the murder, it was a lot more cool, I'd probably be using salmon oil or crawdad oil, some kind of liquid in there because I would actually catch more coon with a set. But we don't have that many coon here, so I'm interested in the fisher, so I use reduced skunk essence. I just put enough in there and make sure that it comes up to the top of that stick. That's all. I don't want it all over the... I don't want an oil slick here all over the spring hole. And that's it. It's as simple as it gets. Use a skunk essence. You catch every fisher that comes along. But use it sparingly. Use it widely. Now this is tower both your trap and fisher and, and coyotes. You won't get many foxes in a spring hole this big. They won't, they won't go. But your coon, your fisher, and your coyotes will. And I like a real small spring hole in comparison with this for like for red foxes. Great foxes are all right. Great foxes are better. Here again we got a good solid rock. And we're just really trapping fish here so we're not concerned about the size of the spring hole. Put that in there out of sight. This is about ideal too. This is got a lot of muck in it. Easy to conceal the trap. And you'll notice I don't use any rocks out in the spring holes like a lot of the old timers recommended. The old time method was just to set a big rock out there and you put your bait on it and you cover it up with some grass. And uh, when I first started using spring holes, I used to try that, but I had a bad habit or something had a bad habit of always stealing my bait. I always come back to bird stealer or something else. And uh, I didn't have much luck with it, so I eliminated all that bait out on the rock. Also in the old days, the information on the spring holes was quite vague. Well, you put a rock in the spring hole, didn't tell you how far out from the bank or anything. You put it out there, put some bait on and set a trap in between. Well, how far out was you supposed to put a three foot, two foot, what? You want to keep everything solid, right close to this rock. No more than the span of your hand from the landing rock to your bait stick. And if you use a bait stick, you're not going to have any problems with birds stealing your bait, which is the biggest crime of the spring hole. Okay. Trap goes right in there just like that. Let's put it in there. We're going to put some moss on this. It's muck, pretty mucky water, so we're going to put some moss on this before we use it. Usually, I like to go a little bit further away to 
get my bait sod, but that's pretty handy. I don't think that's going to be noticed there. Goes on there like that. You got that's a oh, stick I don't like. This one goes right on the outside jaws. Right after that trap, the jaws go right tight to the landing landing rock here. Okay, so these old wet leaves over there, and try to give that a real dry look right over the trap. The animal has. He has a, well, he prefers to hit a lot more if he figures he, he slips off from there. He's not going to get his feet wet. Just like that. That's it. That's a secret of a sprinkle. Now we'll use a little of our skunk essence here. Try to open that pop top where you got it in the bag. Then you don't get it all over your fingers. And a little dab will do you. And you don't have to use much lure when you're using skunk essence. I'll guarantee you. Using too much lure is a no-no. A little dab will do you. And an animal's got a lot better nose than you give them credit for. North American Trapper Predation Packages. Get any one of our specific trapping packages that has been ultimately designed to help you become the master predation controller of your farm, ranch, or hunting lease. Control the predators that are costing you time and money and get out there trapping today with one of our North American Trapper Predation boxes. All of the packages come with the trapping essentials to get you out in the field, plus an instructional DVD that will show you the way. Visit us at NorthAmericanTrapper.com and start breaking dirt today.